Today we have an e-bike in for service. This is probably one of the easiest e-bikes you can actually service. Bosch motor, RockShox suspension, nearly every bike shop should be able to service something like this. Now this is about a year old and the owner has looked after it really, really well. But before we put it in the stand, let's just go through that M check and just see if we can notice anything that's faulty before we even put it in the work stand. So we start on the back wheel and just give everything a bit of a wiggle. This all looks very good some play there in the back wheel which you can see wobbling again we try our suspension put your knee on the back wheel hold on to the actual frame and listen for some knocking that all feels very very good the rear shock the first tell is that the little travel uh, sort of space is right the way down at the bottom indicating that she's going through most of her travel as she rides and that does feel very very soft to me it's not squelching at all but as part of the service we're doing today we'll be doing an air can service on that now one thing is the customer forgot to leave their key with us and we forgot to say can you leave your key it often happens but just a point to remember if you bring your e-bike in for service please make sure you bring your key in because we need to remove that battery she's back on her way right now to bring the key back i'm really sorry about that that was our fault as much as anything else we also give the cranks a bit of a wobble we give the pedals a bit of a wobble looking for any play and that and feeling for any backlash at all that all seems pretty good to be fair up here at the headset we just pull the brake on and just give it a little wobble and if you're unsure if it's coming from your forks or from here you can turn the bars to try and eliminate any fork play and see if you can still feel that in fact i can feel it and i can hear it as well so know that there's definitely some work to be done on the headset both brakes are working well if I pull the front brake the back wheel comes off I pull the back brake front wheel comes off and if I look down, I can see that there's still good pad wear on there as well. We'll check the disc rotors as we get a bit deeper into it. Now, on the front forks, we can see they've hardly used any of their travel, probably just a little over a half. And these feel incredibly stiff and sticky. So it's only a quite a lightweight rider. And so lightweight riders really do suffer with the suspension if they have not maintained because they just haven't got the mass, if you like, to overcome the friction. Quick spin of the tires and wheels look like they're spinning true no obvious problems with the wheels but we'll again we'll look closer when we have them in the stand both tires are on the right way around which is always a good start and we'll check the chain once it's in the stand the only thing the customer really noticed was the dropper post was really sticky and this has hardly got not doing anything at all so and just about works but there's hardly any play left here you have to really pull the cable back to get that to work that's going to need a new cable and unfortunately that cable is rooted all the way through the motor as well so a bit of a hard job actually something you only really want to do on the full service when we take everything apart so this bike is in for what we call our 300 pound service this is a guaranteed labor rate where we take every single component of the bike apart fully service it put it all back together again it'll be back to the customer better than you with all the e-bike servicing done software updated everything um, and then the customer just pays for whatever consumable parts we might need on top of that so things like chains and brake pads etc as we go so with that said let's get into it I like to take the chain off first and just give this a good check with the chain checker. The good news is 0.75 doesn't go in, neither does the 0.5. That chain's in really, really good condition, but it is really, really dirty and you can feel the grittiness in it as well. So we might just be able to salvage that for a little bit longer. Wheels off, just gonna have a very, very quick check just to see if I can feel any loose spokes, anything that might need attention straight away. Actually. All looks very good. And just a quick scan around, looking for any dings in the rim. Sidewall of the tires all looks good as well. Now they're not running these tubeless, but a normal part of a service would be to take those tires off, check the tubeless fluid, remove any sort of excess old stuff and refill that up. But these are running tubes, so we'll probably leave those tires on. Those bearings feel really, really good, but we'll take a closer look in a second. And I'm not gonna to touch the rotor because I've now got dirty hands, but Although we can see a wear mark, I can't see a groove. So using this and taking our measuring tool, this is giving us 1.5 millimeters. So we're on the wear limit. I think there's a little bit more life left in those. There's a little bit of play there in the cassette. And we still have the dork disc uh, fitted from, from new. So this is probably a good indication that this is actually the bike's very first service. Those bearings are definitely running a bit stiff. I can hear them, but looking at the cassette here, this all looks in great condition. 
And if we look at each individual teeth, I can't see any mushroom in. So as I said before, it looks like this is a very lightweight rider. I'd be surprised if she even weighs 65 kilos or so. Um, and really looking after her bike as well. This is in really good condition. Most e-bikes we come to, the chain and the cassette are just absolutely trashed. And so is the Freehub. They're really not designed to handle the sort of power that goes through them. But this particular one is looking really, really good. So with the shock out, what I'm really looking for is any signs of like wear around this shaft, any scratches, anything like that at all, which could help leak air um, or show a sort of sign of wear. And also I'm going to give these bushing hardware a bit of a wobble. All actually feels very, very good. So it might just be that this has been losing some air at some point. So all we're going to do on this as part of this service. We need to do a service every 50 hours on this anyway, is just change the seals around here just to make sure we're not leaking any air. Down at the front of the bike, there's an absolute mess of cables here. Now, this brake cable would actually be better served being on the opposite side, so it's not rubbing against the frame here. So hopefully we've got enough cable routing that we can swap that around. That'll be fantastic. This dropper cable looks way too long, so we're gonna try and tidy that up a little bit as well. And the cable here that's just floating around, if we can get that brake right, we'll be better on this side here and we can tidy that up a little bit as well. So oh, messy cable just doing my head in. So we can definitely improve that setup, I think. Oh yeah, that feels super stiff as well. That's the bottom headset bearing again. And there you can see that play. If you just look at that interface there. So with the forks, the important thing is these little wiper seals here. This is the part you've got to change in that 50 hour service. Now, you don't always have to replace the wipers. If you can keep on top of this, you can service these and just replace the sort of the foam lubricating rings but as part of this, we're gonna be changing that wiper seal because that's where you're gonna get most of the friction on this. And it really does make a difference, especially for lighter riders. Also, that rebound feeling super stiff as well. So we're gonna make sure we give that a good clean up, but the compression dials all feel pretty good, but that all needs a clean. So we'll do that in the suspension room. So this is the exact reason why e-bike servicing is so important because this is all the dirt that's just accumulated over one year of riding. And this ride has really looked after this. All this dirt would eventually ingress into all these electrical connections and all into these bearings if you leave it unattended. So our job is to get this motor out, clean all around the area, put fresh grease on it, make sure it's super clean again so it's got another year of dirt to accumulate rather than dirt on top of dirt and it starts to ingress. So here we go. Ideally, I'd like to disconnect the battery first, but we're still waiting on the key. So let's just get on with it. While we're down here, it's really important that you check all the wiring loom because all this sort of gets stuffed in and it's really easy for these bits of wires to get caught. As you can see, now the motor's out, we've now got access to the seat post cable, which is just here. And we've got access to the rear derailleur cable, which is just here.
Day number two, we're about two hours into the uh, project so far. A customer has brought their key in, which is great news. But so far, we have got all the components off and cleaned and mostly services. So we've gone through these headset bearings. We're going to replace this bottom bearing in a second. Everything else here is in good condition. The dropper lever, which is really, really seized up and dirty, we've taken this apart and just freed that all up so that's all moving properly that's nice to see the disc rotors have given a proper measure with the micrometer and we've still got a little bit of life left in those disc rotors so they're going to stay as is the brake has all been cleaned and serviced i haven't done the rear one on the frame just yet but that's all looking nice the motor when you clean these it's really important to get some like water dispersant down the electrical connections again so we need to check that all this gasket is still intact this hasn't been damaged at all and that all these bearing surfaces are all nice and clean there's no mud in all the cooling fins these overheat quite quickly if they get clogged up with lots and lots of mud so we also want to check all these mounting plates as well that these are all sturdy so big visual inspection inspection on all of the motor so that looks good the rear mech actually this is in really really good condition but what we check for here any wear and tear on the jockey wheels this all looks good I want to make sure the clutch functions properly otherwise we can service the clutch if we need to and also we check for a lot of play because these Dior ones especially can suffer um, a little bit of wear at these pivots and you end up with like a little bit of play in them which really impacts your shifting so this is actually looking in really good condition. There is some evidence there of like a crash or something. So I'm going to really make sure that I check the rear hanger alignment when we put everything back together again. That's normally a good indication that we've gotten some gear shifting problems. So let's have a look inside this frame now that we've got this battery. I know a lot of you just put your battery in and then never ever take it out again, but you should do because especially if you wash your bike, these are nearly always get wet and stay wet. And that's when you sort of start to see corrosion and all the electrical bits. So you can see in here, this is already quite damp in here. These are the bits that if you leave all this very, very damp, it's these electrical connections that can start to corrode and you end up with like either a new battery or most likely a new wiring loom as well, which can all get quite expensive. So every now and then take your battery out, get some water dispersant, some WD-40 down there, dry it all out every now and then, especially if you've just hosed it down or you've been on a really, really wet ride. So now we've got this open, we can start running the cables. You can see the cable routing runs all the way down here. And we're gonna see if we can make sense of this cable mess a little bit better and run a new cable for the dropper. That's the important thing. Right, let's get cracking. So here we have, this is the rear derailleur cable. And on this one here is the dropper cable. Now this dropper cable goes through a really tight bend just here which I think is making all this really, really stiff. So what we're gonna use is the Jaguar Pro Dropper Cable Kit. This actually uses a much, much skinnier cable. This makes it fantastic for trying to get through these really tight bends. The rear cable, just so you know, every shop's got their preference, but we use the Jaguar LEX SL cables. This is our standard or go-to uh, housing. This is for gear and the SL stands for slick lubes. It's actually pre-lubricated on the inside which just gives you a nice good gear shifting momentum and also means that we don't have to sit there and try and drop oil down just wasting time either. I think it works really, really well. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use the old derailleur cable as a guide for the new one. So I'm just gonna unravel this. Weirdly, the inner cable is actually in very good condition. Normally these ones sort of fur up, but it's the outer cable that I think has just got kinked and it's causing the shifting problems. I'm just gonna cut the end off these. We're just gonna use this essentially to guide in the new cable. This is the old one that we took out. And you can see that big crimp in the cable there. So when I put this new one in, I've been super careful to try and not crimp it at all. Also, this is a pretty low quality cable out in this and it's actually really, really bendy. And you can, you can bend it like that quite easily. Whereas the stuff that we've just put in, it's a much harder to do that when it's much more robust. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is put this on the bench to do this dropper post because there's some really complicated stuff going down here. But what's up in the stand, I'm going to take this opportunity to go through and give everything what I call a wipe down inspection. So as I wipe down, clean all this mud off, I'm going to inspect all the bearings, look for any sort of cracks or damage, anything that's going to give me any sort of concern at all. So the wipe down system is a really good way of just visually inspecting every part of the frame. Now 
Now the suspension pivots all seem really, really good, but I need to remove one bolt and see all this corrosion built up on here. So on a surface like this, it's worth removing them, cleaning them, re-greasing them, just to make sure that stuff like this doesn't go any further than just being a little bit of surface rust. This is the dropper cable we've just pulled out. And as you can see, it's kind of bent twice here where it's been shoved down. And this is actually a real problem with bikes that you buy off the factory or the off the shop floor, so to speak, because they need to make sure you've got enough length of dropper post to be able to run your post right at the very minimum insertion, but also all the way up here. Now this rider was particularly small and she was running her seat post inside the frame up to about here. So all this extra cable had to go somewhere. And as a result, it just got crushed in the frame because it's actually quite hard to pull this cable down and through all this internal routing through the battery through all these cable grommets to try and then get the excess and as you saw there was a ton of excess up here anyway so what we're going to do on the service is make sure that the dropper cable is exactly the right length for this rider now it does mean that when she comes to remove this or needs to put the saddle up she's going to have to sort of move some outer cable back through the frame and sort of manipulate it through but it does mean that we're going to have a functioning dropper rather than cables that are trying to do like this. comes to refitting your cranks on an e-bike remember you can get the left and right ones the wrong way around which will then mean that your pedals on thread so take a bit of care and attention and make sure that you get the left and the right correct they normally say actually because e-bike companies are now wised up to this it will say non-drive side or left side so actually the clues all on there for you it's a really common thing that we see is people trying to do their own maintenance and then putting them on the wrong side getting this little lock ring done up to 40 newton meters in the reverse thread can be quite tricky so the tools we've got set up here this is the little cyclos tool which you actually thread into the axle so you get a really good tool engagement and then onto that we're actually using the little 3 8 drive head to insert tool on the wearer tool and this is the wearer x3 which we can actually turn around 
and then use this head so we can actually get that reverse thread torque settings. Just means on these little fragile lock rings, which the tool can slip so easily, you get really, really good tool engagement. These are the gear cables that we use. These are the Jaguar, these are the stainless steel and the slick, which means that once they've done all the coiling, then go back over and make this a completely slick feeling. Dreams, so much better. Bike is almost done, just some polishing off and some finishing touches to do before we hand it back to our customer. But of course, we need to plug it into the diagnostics and update all the service information as well. So we're in the, the Bosch information here and I can see there's no error codes have been reported on this, which is fantastic. You can see that this customer has been riding 89% in EMTB mode and 8% in turbo, uh, loving that. And this all looks good as well. So before we get all the printouts done. We are going to update the service configuration and put another thousand miles onto that and upload that to the device. Um, and of course, we're going to update the software as well. So let's just click all this and transfer directly to the bike. Of course, this has given us a few options depending on which motor that we have and the crank length, etc. So we want the EMTB for crank length less than 170 millimeters. So we can click that one there and click OK. Phone never stops ringing here. <laughs> That's all good. I'm just going to wait for this initialize again. And now we can get their customer, their service report as well. So right here, we can just go through all the details. This is the printout that we're gonna give our customer and we can just confirm all the work that we have or haven't done, anything we might have found that we've gone along the way that we think needs attention or might need doing and really give the customer some reassurance we've actually done all this service work as well. So basically all the necessarily function checks we can just go through and tick all of these because these are all function checks. Visually inspect all the cables for damage, which we've been doing the whole time. That's really important. And clear all the error memory as well, which you've just seen us do. And update the software, that's all good. Control panel's all fitted and there's no damage to this control panel at all. And no cable damage and a function test of all the buttons as well, which we've will carry out in a second. We've checked the battery when it was out, so make sure, to make sure you remove the battery and it switches on and off at the battery. Check the housing that we showed you, uh, check all the cables coming out of it and carry out a test on the charging function. We had this charging overnight, so we know that it charges absolutely fine. Clear the error memory and check the software is up to date, all done. The drive unit, check that the design cover is fitted correctly and not damaged. Check that the drive unit is secured properly to the frame interface. That means all the bolts are at torque and all those little mounting plates that we showed you all fit in fine. Crank fitting bolts are good. Uh, contacts and cables are all clear of damage and dirt like we showed you and carry out a function chest on the chain ring holder and lock ring. Lock rings fitted, check for wear. You see it just goes on and on and on. There's so much stuff to check on an e-bike. Check that the speed sensor and spoke magnet are positioned correctly. Yes, clear the error memory and check that the software is up to date. And create an e-bike diagnostics report. That's what we're doing right now. We are going to take for a test ride in all assistance modes. Now, it seems silly that we do that and then we come back into the diagnostic. So we're going to just finish this off now and do a test ride. Now, of course, if anything comes up in the test ride that's not right, then we come back to this, we plug it in again and we do the whole system again. So I'm going to tick that for now. Um, 
and check functions like the walk assist, etc. So that is all good, happy with that. And if there's any notes that we need to leave at all, we can leave these here. So um, the only notes I need to leave is all good condition, no signs of corrosion, battery, slightly damp, please ensure that you dry it properly right after a ride. So let's print that. And now the customer's got something really reassuring to take away with them that everything has been checked, everything's been done. And uh, I've got a full service record of their e-bike as well, which I think is really, really important. Okay, while that prints, let's go and take this for a test ride and give it a polish. Oh, it's working so much better. It's amazing actually, just a really simple service on those forks just makes them feel so nice. And that rear shock as well, working an absolute dream. Right, let's give it a polish. And I'll talk you through the customer's bill I'm sure you guys will want to know how much this has cost. Bit of PT's Protect and Shine, it's minty fresh. Just a really good way to make sure you've got all the mechanics like fingerprints and, and also it's good just to help you with a visual check just to make sure that you have done everything, that you've, you know, you've tightened every bolt, that you've checked things like tires the right way around. All those sort of little details just give you another thing just to go around the entire bike and check every detail before you give it back. Before I reveal the final price of this, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you like this sort of content, it will notify you of all our future videos and hopefully it will make the channel a whole lot bigger and we can produce even more good content for you. So the bill. Now, as you've seen, this bike probably didn't actually need a service, probably more a precautionary thing rather than an essential service because all the drivetrain was in really, really good condition and the bearings are good. But even then you still started to see the evidence of rust and corrosion creeping in on such a well-maintained bike. So the service cost of this, we do a guaranteed labor package of 320 quid. So we break that down by a full strip and rebound of a full suspension bike plus an hour for the e-bike bit that you've seen us do as well. The only parts we've really fitted on this is actually the dropper cable kit from Jaguar, which is about 20 quid, uh, a shift cable, and obviously the fork and the shock seals as well. So the bike definitely needed those doing. I think she'd probably been running the shock a little bit too soft. And I don't think had been cleaning around the, the fork um, seals very well. So really glad we got them done because it functions so much better and light riders especially really do notice a really good fork service. So the total bill of that actually came to £406.91. I think you can imagine that if you've got a few wheel bearings, a few pivot bearings, a couple of drivetrain components that are worn out as well, an e-bike service bill can easily fetch over £1,000. So keep on top of it guys because servicing can get pretty expensive. Anyway, I hope you found that video really useful. If you did, please consider giving it a big thumbs up. Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. As always, love reading your comments. I learned so much from you guys as hopefully as you learned from this video. All right, take it easy.